Hello, this is Tom Christensen, Superintendent of Windsor Southeast Supervisory Union. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Heartland community for their support since I began my tenure as superintendent back on July 1st. It's been a great experience and I've really met some wonderful people and it's just a great place to be. With me today is Judy Cowens, the principal of Heartland School. And, and first of all, I'd like to start out by uh, congratulating Judy on her retirement and wishing her many years of uh, happiness and health and leisure. and leisure in her retirement. Of course, she's not getting off that easy. We still have the rest of the school year, and that's the reason we're here today with this program to let you know about some things going on in, in Heartland. Um, so first, I'm going to start out by talking about goals, about district goals for the supervisory union. And we had, I guess there were four or five different areas in which we had goals. The first area, learning and teaching, which is the core of everything that we do. And to help improve student achievement and learning, we developed, actually the administration this past uh, school year, developed a, a uh, supervision evaluation model that is being implemented during the school year. And we hope that this is more in line with what we're doing in the classroom, what's going on instructionally. And I know, Judy, you've, you've uh, had some experience. You've done some, some of your observations. Any comments about how that's going? I think it's the best model I've ever seen. It's based upon Charlotte Danielson. And um, the method of implementation, I believe, is very helpful for teachers because it re reduces subjectivity and it gives people immediate and accurate feedback based upon professional teaching standards. Good, good. And we're looking, as this year goes on, this is our trial year to, to try to work out the bugs and, and we're mm -hmm. keeping data on that and uh, making adjustments as we go. Another area in which we're working uh, in evaluation and supervision evaluation is a paraprofessional uh, evaluation model. And in fact, Judy was on the committee that worked with me in developing a new paraprofessional evaluation model, which we're going to be implementing this spring. Uh, a third area under learning and teaching is the implementation of skillful teacher training. All of our mm -hmm. teachers over the next two years will be trained in the skillful teacher. So far, we had the first cohort finish of about 30 teachers. Uh, the second cohort has completed two of their three days of training, and then we'll begin the a third cohort right. uh, in the next month or so. Any, any feedback that you've heard about the skillful teacher training? Yes. Um, I appreciate the fact that it's a model of a training that is occurring um, while people are working. Although that is a little difficult because it takes people out of the classroom, um, I think it's much more efficient and usable to apply what you learn back in the classroom immediately instead of taking a course in the summer and maybe remembering what you're supposed <laughs> to be doing in the fall. What I'm hearing from veteran teachers is that it's a really wonderful review of things that they've been exposed to before and no, it's helped to expand their repertoire of techniques for, and strategies for working with children, and they've appreciated that. Um, for our new teachers, um, it's been wonderful because it's introduced to them to research-based instructional techniques that they can immedi uh, immediately apply um, in, in their real world, rather than waiting for that moment when they finally get a classroom of their own. It's been uh, very well um, received. I and mean, I think the important thing to mention here is that there is a the skillful teacher and this new supervision evaluation model meld together. They're yes. very closely tied and uh, we feel it's a good fit and it, it's going to help us improve instruction in the classroom. I, I think so. It has removed any question of what is it that the principal is looking for when they walk into a classroom. Mm -hmm. Curriculum, mm -hmm. developing a r rigorous curriculum uh, is, is something that we are working on this year. And the way that we're doing this is by looking at our English language arts 
curriculum. We have a committee that's comprised of representation from each of the school districts in the supervisory union. And that committee has, has done some great work so far in helping to develop the um, English language arts curriculum and making sure that it's aligned with the common core standards. And that's something that we are going to be required to do in the next couple of years, make sure that all of our curriculum is aligned with the common core standards. So that um, this year we're working on English language arts, next year we'll move into the math area and again form a curriculum team from across the supervisory union. Professional development. I've already mentioned the skillful teacher. We've also had three joint in-service days with all the schools, school districts in the supervisory union. The first was in August when we rolled out the implementation of the new uh, supervision evaluation model for teachers. And in October, we had a program on bridges out of poverty, which is mm -hmm. something that we really need to tend to across the supervisory union as we have more and more children who are falling into the poverty area. Right. And then the last in-service day, which will be March 13th, is designed to make sure that our teachers are on target with implementing the Common Core Standards, giving them an overview and beginning to do the work of uh, implementing the Common Core Standards. Uh, also, under learning and teaching, we had a goal for mentoring and induction. And in fact, uh, all of our new teachers, new to the teaching profession as well as new to our school, any of our school districts in the supervisory union, have been assigned a mentor. We made sure that we had training for our mentors prior to this summer, and some, t some of the training did go into the summer. And we've assigned mentors to work with teachers for the first two years that they're in the district. And, and I think that's important to get a new, mm -hmm. new teacher or a person new to the district indoctrinated into the school culture and what's going on um, instructionally across the district as well as across the country, what's going on. So um, that is something that we implemented this year. And also we had, tying in with that, is a common in service day, <coughs> excuse me, for all the districts in the supervisory union for new teacher orientation. We did that back in August, and I think that was a good start for them. And everybody hearing the same message of what our expectations are as a supervisory union in, in regard to um, the teaching profession. The next goal area was technology. Um, and one of the things that we've done is we've made sure that in all of our teachers improvement plans that they're, they have a ISTE goal that they're working towards. Um, can you comment a little bit about that, Judy, with what's going on, some things that may be going on with some of the goals you've seen with your teachers? Uh, I think it was, it's been a, uh, a wise move for the last few years to expect that teachers set goals and that one of their goals each year be related to technology. And um, when you make it a goal, people really take it seriously. And all sorts of wonderful things have been happening as a result. Um, every teacher has their own web page. People use it in various ways, uh, from posting daily or weekly homework, uh, to giving curriculum overviews, to uh, um, adding links for practice to, um, to different sites on the web. Um, including um, resources for students so they can do their homework at night if they've forgotten something at home, um, and um, taking large projects and breaking them down into smaller bits and uh, including rubrics for uh, assessment of those projects. So I think that it's been really successful. It's taken a while, I think, for it to become part of the culture um, of the students and the parents to access it, but more and more and more I'm hearing, just check the website, you'll find the homework assignment. Mm -hmm. Or, um, I didn't know how to help my child until I went to the link on the website. In addition to that, we have PowerSchool, which um, shows people their students' grades 
And um, for a grade, say, in language arts, if you wonder why it is the way it is, you can click on it and you can see all of the homework assignments and whether they were all passed in and how the child, um, uh, how successful another child was on each of them. So there's lots and lots of ways um, that those technology goals have been helpful. Um, we also have smart boards, and so that has really changed the way people um, plan and implement their curriculum, the way they teach, and um, how interactive uh, children have been with uh, those materials. And we're even doing things like um, our librarian is uh, using Skype um, to have author visits, mm -hmm. uh, interactive auth uh, author visits with our students. Uh, they've been really successful. And we're about to begin to use the Vermont Learning Network, uh, which gives us uh, access to virtual field trips all over the country. Oh, that's so great. it's changed the way we work. <laughs> so, some other areas in, in under technology. Um, of course, we continue to provide our teachers with staff development, as, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, smart board training and, and uh, some other areas. Google Docs. Google Docs Google is a big one, right? Yes. We're in the process of developing our five-year technology plan mm -hmm. for 2012 uh, for the next five years. Also, this year, all the districts in the supervisory union voted to participate in the development of a wide area network, mm -hmm. which is important because it's going to allow us to ensure reliability and speed in, in dealing with technology and something that we've had some difficulty with in the past and we, we, we're just really looking forward to that as well as some opportunities among the school districts and across school districts within the supervisory mm -hmm. union um, also a, as Judy mentioned Google uh, Google Docs we're also implementing Google email which mm -hmm. by the end of March all the schools in the supervisory union will be online with uh, the Google email and you already mentioned power school mm -hmm. um, a third area goal area for the supervisory union is shared services and one of the things that we did this year is we developed a supervisory union intensive needs class which is mm -hmm. housed at the Weathersfield school and it comprises, the, the class is comprised of students from all the school districts in the supervisory union. And we're realizing some savings there in, in that it's centralized in one place. And uh, we're not having a program in this school and this school. And uh, just that consolidation helps us save some money and provide excellent services to these children in need. Uh, under the administrative area, we had a few goals. One was to conduct an audit of our school board policies, and we had not looked at them for quite a while, so we're in the process right now. If, if you go to any of our board agendas, you'll see over the next few months and probably over the next year, the adoption or revision of certain policies. Um, also, we're investigating the carousel meeting format for the supervisory union where all the all the uh, districts within the supervisory union would meet on one night so right now we're doing the research on that and that's a possibility for the future because as we know everyone's time is valuable and and right now we're duplicating some of the things that we do having each of these individual meetings at each town um, each month and then finally, uh, the last area is the merger study that we're doing, the, also known as the Red Committee, but we're now we're calling it the, Red, the Merger Study Committee. And they began to work back in December, and we're looking at um, all the school districts, we're gonna look at all the financial areas, the academic, all sides of this issue, and determine whether there is uh, or isn't a good match in, in doing some type of merger. We may find out that uh, it just, there are certain services we can consolidate as a supervisory union. And in fact, we, as part of Act 153, we've already begun doing some of that work in bringing services to the SU, for example, in the area of special ed, in transportation, technology, and hiring. 
th those areas uh, have all been brought to the SU. So with that, that, that gives you an overview of what's been happening with our district goals and where we stand so far in progress in meeting these goals. Next, I'd like to, to speak about budget. And this is a concern that all of our citizens have. And we have some good news for Heartland citizens. Um, the budget is going to go down this year. There's a decrease. The budget, the, the total budget for fiscal year 13 next year is $7,502,789, which is a 2.13% decrease from the current year budget. And the actual, in dollars, that's $163,441 in de a decrease from the current budget. What does that mean tax with the tax rate? Um, right now, this current year, the tax rate is 1.510. For fiscal year 13, it will be 1.462, which is a change of 3.153%. And the most important number that people want to know is, what, cent-wise, what does that mean? It's a 0 point, point 0.048, or almost a five-cent decrease in the tax rate. So hopefully that's some good news for our Heartland community. Uh, we encourage you to come to town meeting to find out what's in that budget, if you have any questions. It, prior to that, we also encourage you to contact either Judy or myself if you have any questions about the budget. The budget is on the website. Um, the information that I just gave you is also on the website, and we encourage you to to look at that. Uh, and hopefully, you'll support our budget this year. And um, we're looking forward to another great year next year at Heartland. Um, so at this point, I was going to ask Judy some questions and, and to just okay. highlight for us some of the things that are going on at Heartland this year and what we can expect for the rest of the year. So, so Judy, why don't you just give us an overview and tell us about this year at Heartland? All right. Well, it has been a year of change, and that's not <laughs> going to end, um, with a new superintendent and a new dean of students. Uh, we had some staffing changes after last year due to the budget, and there was a bit of an adjustment. I have to admit that. But our um, school board has been um, um, listening to us and um, has been uh, quite supportive of our needs. Uh, so that's been wonderful. Um, I've been um, working on several goals, uh, some of which are communication, um, some are looking at uh, utilization of uh, substitutes. Um, and one of the goals is uh, looking at uh, how well our high school students are doing. And we have um, just uh, disseminated a uh, Google Doc survey, a Google Form server, a survey to our uh, freshman students to their the students and to their parents to ask how well they felt that they were prepared for high school and we're trying to quantify it in some ways we're looking at uh, honor rolls we're looking at SAT and NECAP scores um, and we'll take that information back analyze it discuss it and try to determine uh, what kinds of changes uh, may need to occur to help our students be as successful as possible in high school that whole process um, and a process of looking at overall school improvement um, has led to many discussions of what is it that motivates kids, what, what brings them to school, what, what excites them, what engages them. And I think that our, our staff um, has been moving toward, for quite a while, greater integration, um, but also um, examining the question of um, student choice in, in electives, um, and our teachers at the in-service time at the end of the year are uh, working on a series of electives that can be implemented next year to give kids some greater choice, uh, perhaps more hands-on, more active education. Um, we know that we need to make adequate yearly progress in math and, and reading and science um, and certainly don't want to lose the gains that we've made recently, but um, we also, especially at the middle school level are concerned about really motivating and engaging students. Um, so I find, that, I find that very, very exciting and I, I appreciate the efforts of, of the staff. Um, along those lines, because I've 
was a former science teacher. Um, I greatly believe in getting students out of doors and uh, in promoting inquiry-based science education. And we have a, a very active science committee who attended the NSTA conference and uh, who provided professional de development to the entire staff on inquiry-based science and inquiry-based methods. Um, in addition to that, we built a pavilion, an outdoor classroom, and um, uh, a uh, Eagle Scout from Hartford built access to a 17-acre plot adjacent to the school. So we now have a true outdoor learning environment. I'm very excited about that. Can't wait for the snow to leave. <laughs> Let's see what else. Um, our music department, I think, is um, phenomenal. And right now, we have about 45% of, of the student body in grades 5 through 8 involved in uh, the yearly musical, which will be Charlotte's Web. That's um, about 38 students on the cast and 25 in the crew. And we also have uh, something called um, the um, the 100 Year Snooze, which is a, a mini musical for kids in grades three and four. And we have 25 students involved there. Uh, we will have an artist in residence come and teach steel drumming, which will be mm -hmm. fun. And uh, they have um, all manner of uh, musical offerings from African drumming to jazz band um, to a really mean recorder group. <laughs> and um, they, they continue, I think, to add enrichment opportunities for our students, as well as our art department. Let's see what else. I'm very proud that we've continued to have a strong relationship with VINS, who's offered um, professional development and assistance to our school, as well as their Environmental Learning for the Future program. Um, and I'm very proud of the number of staff who have volunteered to work on WSSU initiatives, such as offering to be mentors. They're reporting that being trained as a mentor is as beneficial, they believe, as being mentored. Um, so I think that there are, um, there's evidence that the kinds of accomplishments that are occurring at the WSSU level have a direct impact upon the school, its instruction, and um, uh, I think, of course, student and student achievement. Mm -hmm. I hope we'll be able to see numbers to prove that soon. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about some of the curricular initiatives that are going on this year? And we have always had strong curriculum groups. So we, we've had a standards-based program um, based upon the GLEs for quite a while. We're taking a look at things like uh, the phonics program for the very young. Our teachers are involved in the Time for Teachers course. Uh, and we'll make a decision after they've piloted a few programs as to which one we feel will be best at the kindergarten and first grade level. Um, we also are, have tried a, a number of um, programs um, on the computer, with a computer. One is called um, IXL Math and one is called Extra Math. And both of these programs um, have engaged students. One is more based for um, helping um, computation and computational fluency. And we set a challenge for our kids that once they had accomplished the um, computational skills that had been determined for the grade level that they would get a, uh, th there's a, a small bracelet that we ordered for each kid. And so mm -hmm. the children are wandering around with their bracelets that prove that they've attained that. The other program has to, is more um, closely aligned to the curriculum. And it has to do with, um, it's similar to Ames Web, but really monitoring where children are uh, within their skills in particular areas. and so that the teacher can adjust their instruction to meet those particular needs. So that's been exciting. Mm -hmm. One thing I know that happened this year at Hartman was the extension of Kindergarten Day. Right. Have, have you noticed anything as a result of that extended time? I think when I walk in to the kindergarten classes, I see children who um, who actually look more like first graders than kindergartners. Um, their reading skills, their writing skills, um, certainly their behavior, their understanding of routine um, have increased greatly. And I think that that was a very wise move on Heartland's part. Good, good. I, I, I think we're really going to see some results as mm -hmm. the next few years once those children start to move through the 
primary grades. Um, you mentioned professional development. Any anything else that strikes you in that area? That uh, I think our teachers have been kept pretty busy between skillful teacher, time for teachers, mentoring. Um, there are teachers who are continuing um, to um, receive professional development in their specialty, their area of specialty, such as our librarian, mm -hmm. um, is, who's involved in a master's program, but also very involved at the state level and on our technology committees. I was talking to her today, and she's really surprised at how much the job of library and media, media specialist has changed uh, over the last three or four years, something she never expected. But she's been a real leader there. Mm -hmm. And that has certainly helped with curriculum integration, um, integration of technology into our curricular areas. And I also want to mention um, Art Skirker, who mm -hmm. is the WSSU technology integration specialist, and his help with our, with our staff. Okay. I, I wanted to close our session by just talking, giving an update uh, about the principal search process. Okay. Right now, um, we have received the applications, we've screened applications and contacted uh, the candidates that we want to interview. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be con conducting, the interview team has been formed, it's comprised of teachers, support staff, administrators, parents, two seventh grade students, and two board members. And that committee will be conducting interviews on February 1st and February 2nd. We have three interviews each day. And they'll make recommendations to the Board of Education for a second round interview. And we hope that by uh, mid to late February, we'll be ready to make a recommendation to the board mm -hmm. for a candidate that will fill, will be in the position. I don't know whether they'll be able to fill the shoes or replace Judy, but uh, they'll certainly uh, will have somebody on board come July 1st. And again, I just wish you the best of everything in your retirement and thank you for your service to the mm -hmm. Heartland School community. Thank you so much. I know the process you're using, Heartland's going to be in good hands. Okay. Thank you, Judy. Thank you.